Hello, welcome to the It's Always Sunny in Phoenix podcast. This is a weekly podcast where we, three Suns fans, discuss the team as well as general NBA and sports thoughts. I'm Mitch, your host, and joining me as always are Charlie and David. How's it going, guys? Hey, how's it going? Let's jump right into it here. We're going to recap the game at Boston, Friday, January the 15th. I covered that game. It was a 117 to 103 loss. Ronnie Price was out, which was big. We found out that he had toe surgery, and so he'll be out for about three weeks. And then Kelly Olynyk, who I was looking forward to watching, the former Zag, had a great game. Um, it was fun for me to watch, I suppose, because if there's anyone who I want to see put up points against us it's someone that I like not that I ever want anyone to do super well against us I'd rather it be him than someone else he finished the game with 21 points nine rebounds an assist three steals a block he looked good he had a little 9-0 run all on his own in the middle of the game what did you guys think about that game Mirza got off to a pretty decent start that game he ended up with uh 22 points in 21 minutes he was uh he was on on that night so that was good to watch and then markeef who started this game i believe also put up decent numbers he had nine points nine rebounds and four assists and those stats looked pretty good for 18 minutes but he did end up having the worst plus minus on the team for the game Hmm. Okay. David, what do you think? Um, what really stood out to me, one, is that on the last podcast, I completely overrated our defense. But, uh, <laughs> you know, Mirza scoring ridiculously again. Uh, four for seven, I think he was, from three-point range. Um, I He has those nights routinely, so it's not as in your face when you're a fan of the team it's still it's a nice bright bright spot when you have a guy like him coming off the bench and really showing why he is a great bench player yeah he definitely was awesome and we're going to talk about him quite a bit more later on as he's our player of the week. <laughs> the the other guy who was quietly great was Marcus Smart. Uh, 10 point, 11 rebound, 11 assists, triple double. And I have an interesting experience with him because about two years ago in the NCAA tournament, Gonzaga played Oklahoma State. Uh, I was at that game. It was, I think it was the a game during March Madness with the most fouls ever or something like that. Marcus Smart was on the team, and I did not think he was going to be a great NBA player. I thought that he was more of a college great and that he would just be a role player, mostly bench guy in the NBA. So far, he hasn't been that starter or anything for the Celtics but he's been really solid and he's really proved me wrong so that triple double just kind of solidifies him proving me wrong too I think he had the triple double but you know his offensive game still leaves a lot to be desired uh, you, you know he's going to be a good to great role player no matter what for his defense the question is can he be more than a Tony Allen type of player when you look at Marcus Smart. I think that's the easiest thing right now. He doesn't have the the biggest offensive game. You know, he does pass. He does he can create and he can play great defense, but the question is will that offensive game, will he be able to build up that offensive game? Whenever you have a point guard grabbing 11 rebounds, that's great too. So that's a Nice piece to have coming off your bench, especially with the two smaller guards 
he has some nice size at 6'4 that can run the point. Definitely. Uh, any other thoughts on that game? Oh, real quick. I predicted the score of that game was going to be 110 to 100, and I was pretty close. So I was pretty happy. <laughs> but are there any other thoughts that you guys have on that one? No comment. <laughs> <laughs> we can go all the way to the end of the bench and say Sonny Weems rocked out 24 minutes and had 10 points, 6 rebounds, and 5 assists in garbage time, of course. But On what shooting, though? That doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> oh, jeez. Well, I think that's about it for that one. Let's briefly talk about the the game at minnesota sunday the 17th and charlie you covered that one so what are your thoughts all right so we got blown out by 30 that that was tough and the wolves that was their first victory of 2016 and they ended a nine game losing streak against us so and you know when the lottery comes around that might be beneficial to us so but in the game, uh, Towns played great. Solid play from a big man. Hit a few jumpers outside. Wiggins was also all over the place, playing good ball, especially in the first half. Rubio also had a nice game, and he was shooting it well, which is rare. And he, d- he definitely shot a little above average, which kind of added to, the, to, added to our defeat. Yeah, I was I was impressed with Towns, and I've been calling him Cat, and then going <laughs> whenever I see him because it's Carl Anthony Towns. So that's just something that I do with one of my roommates that I thought was kind of funny. But yeah, he was great. This was not a fun game, really. And David, you're not the only one who made a wrong prediction. I said I thought we could win that game, and we didn't. 117 to 87 loss not close <laughs> what what are your thoughts david to be fair i don't think i ever i don't think i picked a oh we're gonna win this game on any of these games because i was terrified that we wouldn't but uh that doesn't mean that doesn't absolve me of that part uh defense again i overestimated it but that being said uh the Wolves have an incompetent coach and play that plays the old guys way too many minutes and they still look ridiculously promising. That and yeah. apparently Carl Anthony Towns might be their best player even with Andrew Wiggins on the roster. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. They have a very young team that is already talented. They're not going to be this bad for much longer, I don't think. No, and Zach Levine is a good two. He's not a good uh, point guard, but he is a good two guard, I think. And he can really score. I think that will, once you either use a smaller lineup with Wiggins at the three and maybe put Shabazz Muhammad. Yes, Shabazz Muhammad at uh, the four or... You have Shabazz Muhammad on, in the three on the from the bench with those kind of minutes moved around and wiggled around. I think that he's a great two. Or can this... be a good two, not a great two. Hold on, let me rephrase that. <laughs> not great. Not necessarily great, but he can be a good role player. Let me rephrase that. I don't want to be I don't want to have more worse things that can be said about me then. <laughs> <laughs> he said our defense was great and Zach Levine was going to be a great player. So I, that's not what I'm saying. Oh, half of that is stuff that I haven't said. Okay. What What do you have, Charlie? All right. And this was also the second half of back-to-back games where we allowed seven double-figure scorers. So I, the Wolves had Kevin Martin... Muhammad, Dang, and Levine all off the bench with 10 or more points. That just shows our defense is really struggling. So where's Kevin Martin getting traded to, you think? 
I really don't know. I, I mean, I just assume that he's going to be traded. It, it doesn't necessarily mean he's going to be, but it sounds like a lot of Wolves fans want him to be, so it just seems like he could be traded for either a young guy or traded to a contender for something. Hmm. Yeah, I have no idea. So, I think that's about it for that Minnesota game. Oh, Markeith Morris played 33 minutes. Are there any other trade rumors for him that you guys have heard of? I haven't really heard anything. but I've seen the Cavs might be interested in Markeith. I saw an article that stated that the players were on board to bring in Markeith, but the front office thought it would ruin team chemistry and... You know, they just don't want a guy like that in their organization, and that's that's believable. This Even though this they have time, J.R. So. Smith. Well, <laughs> then get a little Markeith Morrison with the J.R. Smith and then see what happens, that kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, that could be bad. I, I guess I did see that, and my thought was, who would they trade to us? And the only person I could think of was Mozgov. And I watched Mozgov in Denver. I don't want him in Phoenix at all. They he's, have a, he's not a they have bad a trade player, exception. But I don't want him in Phoenix. What's that? They have a trade exception that they could use. Um between uh, maybe that and like a couple second rounders or maybe something like that. I mean, I don't know. You could try and go for cuz I don't really think they have anything much else, but I know that was kind of the big that was one of the things getting kind of thrown around is they have the trade exception that they could trade for and okay. package it with some picks or something. I don't know. I have no idea how that could go. I know that that's brought up uh, the cat to the Cavs. I don't know if I see that happening, but you know. Yeah. We still have some time, so there'll be much more Markeith Morris news in the future, I'm sure. So I was a lot more concerned with football on the day of this Minnesota game. So do either of you have other thoughts or do you want to move on? I think I'm ready to move on. Okay, let's talk about the Indiana game. That was last night since we're recording Wednesday the 20th. Uh, that game, Tuesday the 19th, I covered it. It was actually pretty close. 97-94 to 94 final. And it looked like we were completely out of the game. And then we turned it on at the very end. Devin Booker, new nickname for him, by the way, the librarian. <laughs> he had a career-high 32 points. He is the first rookie to have over 30 this season. Looked amazing and we actually should have had a chance to win that game I talked about it in the recap but we were down by three and we had just made a shot to put us down by three the Pacers were inbounding the ball and they didn't pass the ball it was a handoff from out of bounds and that is a turnover but the refs didn't see it didn't review it just let them play on and we lost the game I'm not saying we would have won the game if that would have been reviewed and overturned but it would have given us a chance to take a shot to tie the game up so I was a little a little mad at that but in the end you just kind of have to think about this was probably good for lottery odds and things like that what were your guys thoughts on that game so I think uh, even if we would have gotten that uh there would have been some sort of bonehead play either a turnover by a certain uh guy that's playing our point guard position right now or a <laughs> really bad shot but uh you know that could be just be me um yeah the devin booker first rookie this season with over 30 points it looked like julia locafor could get there a couple of times it looked like either Towns or Porzingis could 
get there a couple of times where they were pretty close. Uh, D'Angelo Russell was, I think, really close to the game where he turned his ankle. He was at 27, and he turned his ankle in the fourth. And I think he probably would have broken it there. He would have been the first. But, you know, the almighty Armani is pretty great, and I'm glad that he was the first one to be able to have the right of a 30-point game. And yes, the almighty yeah, Armani. And, and this Praise made... <laughs> This made Booker the third youngest player to score 30-plus points, and that puts him in some pretty elite company with LeBron James and Kevin Durant being the only two younger to pull that off. And Booker went, he shot five for six from the field in the first half, got off to a hot start. That's a great shooting percentage, and I was really looking for him to get the ball up quite a few more times than that in the second half, which he did. I think he put up 10 more to end 9 for 16 from the floor on the night, 6 for 11 from 3. So, love watching this guy. I think it's great that we can already compare him to LeBron and Kevin Durant. Not that (laughs) we should be or anything, but that's the only bright spot of this season, Devin Booker. So, let's compare him to Kevin Durant. We're going to compare him to the all-time greats and some of the best (laughs) players... Two of the best players in the world right now, and just comparing to that and pretend like everything's <laughs> sunshine and rainbows. Exactly. Praise be <laughs> Almighty Armani. <laughs> and Brandon Knight was the opposite. Eight turnovers, six in the first half, 22 team turnovers. That is horrible. You don't win games. No team wins games with 22 turnovers and eight by one player being your point guard. We're not really winning games Sometimes, right now. So. Right. Sometimes I just think Brandon Knight does something great and then he goes into the huddle and Jeff Hornacek is like, why are you doing that? We're trying to lose here. <laughs> why don't you turn the ball over or something? Maybe he's just listening to the coach. <laughs> I don't know. You know, I would like to think that, but these are the same things that were happening when we were above 500 back in That's true. whenever that was. So, yeah. <sighs> Just a distant memory now. And something that I happened, I happened to notice out of night was the variety of ways he picked up his turnovers this game. <laughs> um, normally, it just seems like a boneheaded pass is what gets him. But he got he got the ball ripped from him a couple times just bringing the ball up the floor. So, And then that makes me wonder about how was this guy almost an all-star in the East last year? He was running the point full-time for the Bucks. What changed between then and now? Yeah, that's a great question. I, I don't even know. You could make the argument that maybe the Bucks, the rest of the Bucks players, played good enough defense that the turnovers were mitigated. I know that there were there are a lot of Bucks fans coming out of the woodwork complaining about the turnovers and saying that they talked about them last year. They could have. I don't know. I wasn't paying attention really at all. That's bad on me. I think, that, but I think it's got to be that if he was having those same turnover problems, the team defense of the Bucks was just is way better than of the Suns team defense right now. So. Yeah, I would assume that they were able to just make up for it with make up for the turnovers with not letting the other team turn around and score. Hmm. That that is an interesting thought. The other thing about this game that was worrisome was the injuries. Every one of our power forwards was injured. John Luer was out from the start. Markeef hurt his shoulder in the game, and Mirza had an ankle injury, which looked just like a twisted ankle kept out for precautionary reasons, but still out for the game. So had to go even smaller than usual because of that. Do you guys think any of those injuries are serious? I don't think any of them are serious. I, I bet those guys will both be back within if not next game within a few games after that I could see Markeith being out for a little longer than Mirza 
I think Mears is a pretty tough dude. He's not going to be held out for longer than he needs to be. Yeah, um, I think that uh, it's it's going to depend, but I think I think Mears will be fine to go uh, against the Spurs Thursday. Thursday. Yeah, that it is on Thursday. Yeah, I should know that. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, so I think Mirza should be ready to go. We'll see about the other guys. His, Mirza's ankle looked, it didn't look like it was too bad. He'll, I'm sure he'll be good to go. Let's move on to that San Antonio game. David, you are covering that one. So what are your thoughts <laughs> before? It's Thursday the 21st. Well, <laughs> we've had some really great games against San Antonio this year. And by great, I mean uh, our lack of defense and their historically great defense this year has really shown. I was looking up because I was just curious what uh, the career averages of our starters were. And trying, I figured that we could play a little bit of a game where we tried to decide if they're going to score under or over their the career game, the career points. Our, our starters will. So PJ Tucker, his career versus San Antonio is 6.3 points per game. Is he going to go over or under? Over. Under. <laughs> Someone's got to, right? All right. So Markeith is penciled in right now. His career points per game against San Antonio, assuming that he, so assuming that he plays, this is an over under his career versus San Antonio is 12.2 points over under if he plays. Definitely under. I I would say under, but I also doubt that he plays. It's fair. If he does play, he's going up against Lamarcus, and Lamarcus has been playing surprisingly good defense this year mm. against fours and fives. So there's that. Tyson Chandler, career versus San Antonio, eight point one points per game. Over under. <laughs> Ooh, gotta go lower. I, I really want to say over, but he hasn't been scoring at all lately, so under. And Tim Duncan right now has the best def- real defense of plus minus in the NBA right now. He only plays 20 minutes per game, but then they have uh, the great uh, giant Boban as their backup oh, center. Yeah. So <laughs> either him or Boris, and we'll see about that. Devin Booker. Career versus San Antonio, six and a half points per game in two games. Over, way over. <laughs> triple in it. I'm going to say over. <laughs> He's going to triple or quadruple that. <laughs> Praise be almighty Armani, please. <laughs> we got we to have something. <laughs> and Brandon Knight. Career versus San Antonio, 13 points per game. Over, under. Hmm. I'm going to go over, but I think he'll have to shoot it more than 20 times to get it. <laughs> Probably. Uh, I agree with that. I'll, I'll say the same thing. All right. So currently for over the season, PJ is averaging at his career versus San Antonio. Marquise averaging under his career against San Antonio, 12 versus 10. Tyson's averaging this season under his career versus San Antonio, eight versus five. Uh, Devin's, or hold on, Almighty Armani <laughs> is averaging eight a game. So that's technically over San Antonio, even though he's only played San Antonio twice. That's besides the point. And Brandon Knight is averaging 19.7 compared to 13 against the Spurs. So I think all of that sounds about right for where we went. Mm-hmm. So yeah, yeah. that's the big yeah. thing from there. I this is not going to be good. No, this is not going to be a very good game. Uh, we'll see how Devin Booker does against Danny Green. Danny Green shooting bad, but he's been playing very good defense as usual. Hey, maybe if he's really going off, maybe we can. Uh, or maybe if Booker is really going off, we can see Kawhi on. Let's not hope for that at all. Um, and that's that's all I've got for this game. It's going to be interesting. By interesting, yeah, I mean not I, interesting. 
I covered the last San Antonio game, and it was probably the worst game of the season. It was horrible. But I will say I miss Boris Diaw. I really liked him. Did you see the cappuccino maker in his locker? <laughs> I did. Saw the, I thought that was hilarious. Had Saw some visual evidence to make sure it was actually in his locker. It, it really is. That's pretty cool. It's fantastic. Um, I, I love I love Fat Boris. The uh... <laughs> he was so skinny when he was with us. I know. To right now, just almost two different looking guys. <laughs> yeah, there's yeah. It's it's really interesting. I I read. I don't remember where it was, but there was there's this tall tale going on about uh, Boris's athleticism before he got fat and. I, re- I remember him being like decently athletic, but uh, there's a story about um, the, they did Amari's vertical, and he was he came in sipping on a espresso or something like that. He came into the where it was all going on, and he was like, "Oh, how did Armani or how did Amari do?" I almost said Armani. I'm, I've got Devin Booker on the mind. Whoa, whoa, whoa! <laughs> <laughs> how did Amari do? And they're like, "Oh yeah, he got about here." And the uh, Boris was like, "Huh, oh, huh," and put down his espresso or cappuccino or whatever went over got all of the on the vertical got all of them down the like the entire one more than amari and then was just like oh that's cool picked up his espresso and walked off wow (laughs) that's a Uh, tough story to believe but i'm going with you i believe it i'm just gonna roll with it because (laughs) it wouldn't surprise me at all and that sounds like a very french thing to do so (laughs) i read the same story too it's it's legit, I think. <laughs> <laughs> All right, on the other end of this spectrum here, I noted this. I want to find out who has more lateral quickness at this point of their career, Tyson Chandler or Tim Duncan. <laughs> if we're if we're basing ourselves on the past few games, I'm going to say Tim Duncan even. <laughs> I mean, the corpse of Tim Duncan does he even jump anymore? He doesn't have to. He's just always I, in the right spot. I mean, he's still he gets <laughs> he's getting tons of blocks and he's playing really good defense. But does he technically jump? Does he? I mean, I'm gonna go with Tim Duncan. <laughs> Unfortunately, <laughs> I have to agree, and that's uh, pretty sad. Yeah. <laughs> so that that won't be the most fun game, but maybe the game against Atlanta on Saturday the 23rd will be better. Charlie, you've got that one, so what are you looking for? Well, I haven't caught a Hawks game this season yet, so there's three things I know. Millsap and Horford lead the way for them. A nice one-two punch in the front court. That'll give us a lot of trouble. And then Kyle Korver's shooting has come back down to earth this season, so... He's a little more manageable to guard. We don't have to worry about him too much, but they do have other guys stepping up and playing well. And because we like talking about him so much, Devin Booker, I hope his shot never goes on a slump like Corver's has this season. I, I like Kyle Corver too. My My intramural team always makes the joke that before all our games, we read the Kyle Korver tips to shooting. <laughs> We've never done it, but we always joke about it. <laughs> Kyle Korver's getting kind of old now, isn't he? He's in his 30s. Right? Yeah, he's. I think he's in his 30s. and But a jump shot isn't something that should really go with age. Yeah, but I hmm. mean, if you're tiring yourself out trying to do all the normal off-ball stuff that he does, and then you finally get to go to your shot that could the tiring factor could be getting I haven't to him. seen any highly celebrated Kyle Corver dunks on Sports Center this year yet either so <laughs> maybe he's losing it a little bit no. we got one do we get two last year or only one I'm not I feel sure like it was, I feel like it was only one but I'm not gonna go with I'm I don't want to be wrong too many times in this podcast, so I'm just going to let it go. Definitely single digits. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
I, he's still a decent player, though. What are your thoughts on that Atlanta game, David? I, too... Oh, actually, no, that's a lie. I have watched a couple Atlanta games. Uh, my thoughts on the Atlanta game is I hate the lime green that the Hawks have now. Oh, really? I really do not like it at all. I really enjoy the feathered pattern thing going on at in yeah, the paint at yeah. their home court and they kind of have it going on in their jerseys i dig that the lime green i just cannot get behind at all other than that both front court players al horford and paul Millsap, very versatile can kind of do just about everything and yeah Okay, well, that that should be a better game than the San Antonio one. Maybe. <laughs> Hopefully. Uh, I've got the, the Philadelphia game. It's at Philadelphia Tuesday the 26th. I will be watching for a win. We better win that game. I know what the situation is this year, but I hate losing. And I covered the last Philadelphia game where we lost... And it was horrible. So we better win. We have the opportunity, but the thing that worries me is Ish Smith. He has played us well every time he's played us this year. He's played us being on two different teams, and he just really likes to play us tough. He must have something against the organization after being on the team or something. I don't know if he does or not, but... He always plays us really tough. And then there's Jaleel Okafor. Last time we played them, he didn't play. And so if he's playing, then that could be a really tough matchup for us. What do you guys think? Yeah, I missed that Philly game. That was over Christmas break. That was one I missed, but I was definitely glad I didn't miss it. And that was kind of the the turning point of the season. Was that the game Bledsoe went down? Yes. Yeah, so that that was just a tough loss and and sadly now we're pretty evenly matched with the 76ers. If you would have told me that last season, I would have told you that you're crazy, but that's the case now. And even though the lottery will come into this game, well there's a good chance it could. I really would like Mitch like to see a victory. Yeah, I don't ever hope for a loss, ever. As as fun as it is to say, like, oh, well, with the Timberwolves, if we lose, then we can get a little bit a leg up on the lottery race and all that. I, I would like to see a win. I see that as one of the winnable games of our stretch of games going on right now. It will, we should have more talented guards than them. For whatever reason, Ish Smith has decided to be uh, MVP caliber Ish Smith. Uh, only saying that slightly facetiously. For whatever reason, he's playing decently. Nerlens and Jaleel are kind of learning how to play together. We should have more guard talent. Who knows? We definitely don't have as much front court raw talent right now the the front court depth could be an issue for us too especially if john lure is still out i wonder how much longer he'll be out for yeah and then an, we'll see another thing about Sorry. ish I don't think he holds anything against the Suns in particular, but a guy with a career like that, he's been on so many different teams. He's been cut. He's been traded. He's just hasn't got to stick around somewhere. But so, but I do think when he does show up to one of those arenas that he used to play at, he wants to, he wants to show the crowd, the coaches, all of his old teammates that they probably should have kept him around. I'd really like if we had Ish over Ronnie Price right now. That'd be a, oh, that'd be that'd some be fun basketball. Yeah, you know I he, I think it's more of you you see it with uh guys that are like Ish. I I, th I don't think it's as much that 
he's trying to prove anything to a team that he was on. I think it's more of he's just trying to prove that he deserves that roster spot more than anything. I mean, he was cut by Philadelphia or not re-signed or whatever at the end of the last or in the off season. Let me rephrase that. New Orleans signed him and then New Orleans sent him over for two second round picks or a second round pick or something like that. So, I mean, this is a second stint with the 76ers. I think he's really just trying to prove that night in and night out that he deserves to be on the roster. I think he does. I don't know why he's been cut by so many people, traded by so many people. I know that Pelicans wise, they were trying to, everyone was kind of getting healthy. So, he didn't really he couldn't really outplay the other guys but he always plays hard he always tries uh i had no problem with ish when i whenever i've watched him play so he always seems to play with a chip on his shoulder well, yeah too, which i kind of like he's he's a journeyman i mean he's trying to just nail down that spot on a roster and i think that is a tremendous gives you a tremendous chip on your shoulder you've been playing basketball your entire life you know when you're these kind of guys, you're going through all the ranks. You want to prove that you can do it at the highest level and be paid to do it at the highest level. And while he is getting paid, he doesn't have that 100% security. And I think that that's enough motivation to have that chip on his shoulder. So, yeah, for sure. Let's talk about the Cleveland game on Wednesday, the 27th. It's a back-to-back the night after the Philadelphia game. And David, wow, you've got some rough games. I'm so sorry. What do you, what do you think about that? So, yes, I covered the first Cleveland game. And that was surprisingly close. They had just, they had been with back with Kyrie. Kyrie was starting to gel. I think that was... It was a couple, or it was a week after they had gotten back Kyrie. So he's starting to kind of get into the rhythm of it. It'll be interesting to see their defensive wise if we can exploit it at the four position. Kevin Love is not a good defender. Uh, If we can exploit that somehow, it'd be interesting. I don't see us actually exploiting that very well. If we could run a bunch of different pick and rolls trying to get our score get trying to get either Brandon Knight or Devin Booker or one of those guys on Kevin Love I would love to see that don't know if that's going to happen it's going to be a little tough Pro- PJ will probably bring his A game if he's guard- guarding LeBron who knows what we're going to get from the center position hopefully Brandon Knight doesn't I mean, Kyrie can steal the ball and the hope is that Brandon Knight can kind of can keep play a little bit of smarter, try not to cough it up so much. And I don't even know who's starting for them a shooting guard. Is it? I don't know if it's Jr. or Shumpert. I think it's Jr. Which I, I think so. Yeah. Yeah. So oh, you know, I, I mean, he's ridiculously streaky. So who knows? He isn't he isn't any Armani, so <laughs> Do you have any thoughts on this one, Charlie? Yeah, I'm looking forward to watching Knight have to be matched up with Irving because normally Bledsoe would be on him. So that's gonna be a handful. He's a great point guard. And then on the opposite side of the court with the ball in Knight's hands, he's gonna really have to try to take care of it especially after all these high turnover games lately. So that's a matchup I'm looking forward to. And then obviously PJ trying to shut down LeBron. That's always exciting to watch. Yeah, PJ on LeBron will be fun. It's Whether you like LeBron or not, it's always interesting to watch one of the greatest players in maybe LeBron's a little past his prime, but when they're playing really well. So it's, I don't watch the Cavs on a nightly basis. So this will be an opportunity to watch a great player. And that's, I, 
I don't really think that we'll win, and I'm not expecting to. So this is one that I'll be watching without taking the scoreboard into consideration. Agreed. I was going to try and look, because I was trying to remember, I think LeBron had a off game uh, when we played him last. No, I think that was still during the middle of his shooting slump. His jump shot was not falling at all. I think that PJ did a pretty decent job on him. I'm not sure what his exact numbers were. I was trying to look those up real quick, but I didn't give myself enough time. So we'll see. Uh, LeBron's jumper has been a little bit better. Has not been. It has not been good. As good as it should be, but you know, hold on. But finally gotten there. Twenty fifteen Phoenix. Hold on. So he shot forty percent, twenty percent from three point. And he scored. Um, I don't know what he scored, but whatever. <laughs> well, 20% 20 per, 20 from three isn't very good. I bet he improves on that number for sure. Probably. Oh, there it is. 14 points. Okay. So they have 14 Ooh. points, seven assists, four rebounds, all defensive rebounds, two steals, and a block. Okay, there it is. Okay. Uh, I bet he, I'll expect him to score more for sure. Yeah, he'll he'll probably be a little bit better than that. Yeah. Well, let's move on to our player of the week segment. As I mentioned earlier, we're talking about Mirza Toledovic. He is one of my favorite players, and you guys know this already, but for all the listeners, I am, my family is from the former Yugoslavia, uh, more specifically Croatia, Serbia, and Slovenia, but when my family was there, it was all one, and so pretty much any guy whose last name ends with itch, I like, <laughs> uh, so Mirza Toledovic, awesome three-point shooter. He's from Bosnia, and he has a very heartbreaking story of war. In 1992, Bosnia went into war with a lot of the other former Yugoslav nations. And there's stories that Mirza tells of being out playing basketball with his friends at a court nearby his house and then hearing sirens going off and grenades being thrown and bombs being dropped and having to run back into his house and hide and just being terrified of that and his escape from all of the war was basketball he played professionally in Europe for 10 years before coming over and joining the Nets he played a few years on the Nets and came over to Phoenix this past offseason. He's 30 years old, but still only been in the league for a few years. Uh, he's had an excellent season with us so far. What, what do you guys think about Mirza? I really like having a guy like Mirza off the bench, a true floor spacer. He has good size. I think he's 6'9", and his his biggest strength is the three-pointer, so other teams are always worried about that when he's on the court. He seems like a good guy to have on your team. He works hard, and it seems like he's not scared of anything or anyone, and I'm sure a lot of his past has something to do with that. And the memorable thing I can think of was after a hard foul on LeBron. Uh, LeBron took an issue with it, and he tried to get right up in Mirza's face and start talking some smack. And Mirza just had 
the slyest smirk on his face. Like, LeBron, <laughs> I don't care what you're going to say to me, man. Let's just play basketball. And th- that was kind of the first thing I saw about Mirza. So I liked him right away. <laughs> that, yeah, that's that's a great just explanation of his attitude. He's just there to play the game, do it the right way. And he's always positive despite being seeing war and having family members die and those kind of things. Those are really tough and it's easy to be really negative after seeing those things. But he stays positive and I I heard in an interview that he said his family was always positive even during wartime and he just took that attitude with him and it, I really I think that's great. What do you think about him, David? You know, so I remember the that was was that last year when he was with Brooklyn, the whole LeBron incident. A year or two, I think. Yeah. Yeah, it was something like that. I remember when that uh came up. I remember seeing that. I I kind of dug it. I don't like LeBron at all. So, whenever someone gets under his skin, I kind of appreciate that. But really turned me around and made me really enjoy Mirza was the game against the Clippers when we were at home the game that we won when half of their team was out and I remember he shot a three with basically the game over and we'd already locked up the win and Austin Rivers got really upset about it randomly and was was talking smack they were kind of had a little bit of a back and forth that you could see and he was kind of Marissa was just laughing like this is ridiculous this is a game of basketball who cares about any of this I'm I just shot a three and yeah it was over but who cares you know you play to play you would just one of you had just gone for a steal before that then you want to complain because I shot a three when I, we were already up come on so <laughs> that I really enjoyed looking over his I mean, just how he's done so far this season. I mean, he already has four games. He has four games of over 20 points off the bench. He's got 13 games with 15 points or over. So that includes those four with 20. I mean, his shooting is great. Uh, there's there's a whole lot to like about him. He's, gotten, he's made 91 three-pointers, shooting about 42%. There's there's a lot to like about him, and as he's on your team, and he's got that hot hand, there's there's even more to like. Definitely. So I I did an interesting thing for my political science senior presentation kind of thing. I talked about how basketball is a tool for foreign relations and international development. So I think Mirza is a great example of this. All these stories from Bosnia are things that the average person in America isn't going to know about. And then these players come over from these countries and you listen to their interviews and you hear about all of these things and you learn about events that are happening in other countries. And another example that I used was from the ESPN 30 for 30 called Once Brothers. It's that one's about Vladi Divac and those guys and the Serbia Croatia conflict, which is a whole different story, but I highly recommend that and I talked about that a lot in my presentation. But I think it's so interesting that the NBA has so many of these international players and they just contribute to society and they make us I would say more united as a global community so I I think it's great that Mirza has been so successful in Phoenix the the thing about him is he's a great three point shooter and everyone knows that but what are other aspects of his game that he's good at and maybe people don't realize (laughs) 
I think he's an able passer when he has the ball in his hands. Um, when we're moving the ball around and it comes to Mirza, on the perimeter at least, it seems like he's either going to fire up a three if he has a little open space or that ball's going to get zipped off right to the next guy. He doesn't He doesn't slow down the, the movement of the ball. He doesn't eat up the shot clock. And that's something I really appreciate out of a out of a three point shooter like that. For sure. That's that's always helpful. And making that extra pass, I've noticed he'll he'll do that sometimes. Every once in a while he'll pass up a fairly open three, and open has a different meaning for Mirza, but hmm. he'll make the extra pass and get a great shot instead of just a good shot. And I always appreciate that. What about things he needs to work on? One thing I've noticed is since we kind of have had an absence at the power forward position, he's been called to do some things that he normally doesn't, like post up, and I don't think he's great working in the paint. Are there other things that he needs to work on? You know, what he needs to work on is actually part of what I like. Of The other aspects of his game that I like is that he's willing to do the things that they ask him to do, whether it be post up or cut to the rim to keep the defense honest. Um, he definitely needs to work on it. I know that he... I Just from watching him play, you can tell that he has been working on little post moves here and there and working to do, drive and be able to drive to the basket even if it doesn't go in he's not completely discouraged by it but you would like to see him be able to work on that and be able to get those shots at a higher posi- percentage not position brains all whacked out anyways <laughs> I agree with that for sure, though, especially cutting to the rim and driving. He's been doing that a lot more lately, and he's a really hard worker, and you can tell that he's really trying, but it's not really his game. Any nicknames? All right. (laughs) Okay, so I mentioned this to David. I came up with a very cheesy, very original nickname for Mirza. But okay. first, I want, I'll want i say the the one that is going around a bit that I do like. Um, some variation of Fearza, like no fear, Ooh. or fear the Mirza, fears of the Mirza, no fears of the Mirza. <laughs> like, you can go any way you want. So I, li- I like that. But then the, the cheesy one I have is... <clears throat> Mirzanto, genetically modified long range shooting organism. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. And I'm the nerd. Jeez. <laughs> oh, oh, I love that. That is amazing. I just wanted to bring something new to the table. I, I thought that's where I could leave my mark on the show. <laughs> that's fantastic. Oh, I'm going to use that. Mirzanto. That is amazing. <laughs> The the one that I see people using, or well, that he uses actually, is he, he does like an M for monster. That's his little hashtag when he posts things. I just follow him on Facebook and that's what he uses. So I was thinking monster Toledovich or something, but Mirzonto is way better. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> well... Any other final thoughts before we wrap it up here? I don't think so. Yeah, I think we covered a lot here. Let's do what we always do, where we each plug something non-sports related, and let's start with Do I have to start again? Come on. Yeah. Uh. (laughs) So, me being a nerd and all, TV shows have started to pick back up and what started this past week or this week, I guess it is anyways, the 
CW CW hit show The Flash started back up. And that's my favorite superhero show that airs on network TV and is fantastic and you should watch it because it's really good and it's super cheesy and lame but uh, that's what it should be. I say not my uh, favorite TV show in general because that goes to Netflix and that's Daredevil because that's way better. So there's that. Uh, that's my plug. Okay. So kind of kind of a double exactly a little bit (laughs) okay charlie what about you all right so i'm gonna try to be quick with this so i don't over talk it and then ruin the hilarity that it actually is the comedian john benjamin the guy that voices archer on the show archer and bob from bob's burgers um he released a jazz album which (laughs) is it's interesting in itself but believable But then, here's the thing. He does not know how to play the instrument he plays in the album. He he tries to play the piano throughout the the album and it's just ridiculous. He has he has musicians with him, like accomplished jazz musicians who are really good and they carry it, but it's just hysterical when he comes in. And it's called Well, I should have learned how to play the piano is the album name. So you you should go check that out, get a good laugh out of it. Oh my gosh! I definitely need That's to. That's fantastic. Uh, I I might have mentioned it on here before, but I'm a jazz bassist, and I also love the show Bob's Burgers, so I am definitely gonna have to check that out. That sounds hilarious. My plug is for something I'm gonna go do as soon as we're done recording this. Bent Trivia in Spokane, Washington is excellent and they host trivia at a bunch of different restaurants it's a lot of fun shout out to johnny b he's a great host and they do events and that kind of stuff all kinds of great trivia categories and it's something fun to do on a week night so once we're done recording i'm gonna head over to the pizza place and do a little trivia well all right think that's about all our time oh yeah it's it's a lot of fun (laughs) oh my goodness that's that's about all our time so just remember we're on social media you can find us on facebook phoenix suns multiple sources follow us on twitter at sunny in phx pod and then email us with questions thoughts or suggestions sunny in phx pod at gmail.com and of course, check out our website, multiplesources.net slash Phoenix Suns and the entire Multiple Sources blog and podcast network. We post all our recaps and podcasts to multiplesources.net slash Phoenix Suns. Thank you for listening. We're looking forward to watching the next couple games before we record again. And feel free to talk to us on email, Twitter, Facebook about the games or anything. So we'll be back next Thursday and go Suns. Oh, yeah.